last year, it felt like the Trojans could have been given the nicknames the Cardiac Kids as it felt like every game went down to the wire. They ended up putting a strong season together, but ultimately fell short losing in the Pac-12 championship game to Oregon and deciding not to participate in a bowl game. Clay Helton once again seems to be on the hot seat, which is something I feel like is talked about every year when it comes to USC's coaching job. The question is, will he survive this season and how will they do? Let's talk about that. We are now almost done with the month of July, meaning we are in prime preview magazine season as college football season quickly approaches. Over the next month, I will be previewing every college football team, yes, all 130, and in this episode, I will be looking at USC. Last year, the Trojans finished the season 5-1 and 5-0 in conference play. Four of their games went down to the wire. Arizona State, Arizona, UCLA, and Oregon, with them coming out on top in three of those four contests, but losing to Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, 31-24. They will look to have a successful season this year and return to the national spotlight, returning 69% of their overall production from last season, which ranks 67th nationally. On offense, they returned 69% of their production, which ranked 69th nationally, and on defense, they returned 69% of their production, which ranked 73rd nationally. Head coach Clay Helton returns going into the season with a record of 45-23. and Before taking over the head coaching role, he served as the interim head coach twice before given the full-time gig after the 2015 season. He has since led the Trojans to two Pac-12 championship games and one conference title as a full-time head coach, and led them to the Pac-12 title game in 2015 as the interim head coach. Going into the season, Helton seems to be on the hot seat, and the Trojans could be looking for a new head coach if they fail to perform up to expectations this season. Offensive coordinator Graham Harrell enters his third year in a role, serving as the offensive coordinator at North Texas from 2016 to 2018. Defensive coordinator Todd Orlando enters his second year in Southern California. For USC, he spent three years as the defensive coordinator at Texas and the two prior years as the defensive coordinator at Houston. On offense, the Trojans returned seven starters, including quarterback Keaton Slovis. As a freshman, Slovis threw for 3,502 yards, 30 touchdowns, and nine interceptions, earning Pac-12 Freshman of the Year honors in 2019 after starter JT Daniels went down with a season-ending injury in the season opener. Slovis was injured in the bowl game that year, and some contribute that to why he struggled to get a zip on the ball at the beginning of the season. Slovis threw for 300 yards in four of USC's six games and threw for five touchdowns twice last year. He finished a 2020 season throwing for 1,921 yards, 17 touchdowns, and 7 interceptions, completing 67.1% of his passes. If he is able to repeat the success he had in 2019, he could be a future first-round pick. Oklahoma State transfer Brendan Costello and true freshman Jackson Dart and Miller Moss will battle for the backup quarterback role. I want to pause for a second to let you know I have done videos on both Keaton Slovis and Jackson Dart in the past. If you have not seen them, make sure to check them out after this video. I will leave a link in the description below. When it comes to the running back position, USC lost Marquise Stepp to Nebraska and Stephen Carr to Indiana to add Texas transfer Keontae Ingram. Vave Malapiai returns after rushing for 503 yards in 2019 and 238 yards last year. He missed the Pac-12 championship game last season as well. True freshman Brandon Campbell could also find himself in the rotation after he had some exciting plays in the spring. When it comes to the wide receiver room, 6'5 wide receiver Drake London returns and should improve after deciding to solely focus on football. He led the team last year with 502 yards, averaging 15.2 yards per catch. Rue McCoy also returns, and the Trojans add Colorado transfer Katie Nixon. They also add Texas transfer Jake Smith and Malcolm Epps, and return veteran tight end Eric Kroman Holick. On the offensive line, the Trojans return four of their starters from last year, but lose first-team Pac-12 lineman Elijah Vera Tucker. Six returning players have starting experience as they combine for 75 total starts. The line will look to go from a weakness to a strength this year for USC. On defense, USC returned six starters and recorded 16 takeaways last year. The defensive line could be one of the best in the Pac-12. Top prospect and true freshman Corey Foreman could make an instant impact this season. Keep an eye out for a video on him dropping this week. Four defensive linemen return with starting experience, and they add Alabama transfer Ishmael Sofer. At linebacker two-time all-conference Drake Jackson returns and looks to be a destructive force from the outside linebacker position. 
This linebacker unit could be one of the more under the radar groups in the Pac-12 this season. In the secondary, USC loses two key starters from last year. They add Texas transfer Xavion Alford and Auburn transfer Chris Thompson. Isaiah Polo Mao should be a key player in the secondary. Chris Steele also returns. According to Phil Steele, this is a deep unit for the Trojans. Going into the season, USC will look to win the Pac-12 championship and make noise this season on the national stage. If they don't, head coach Clay Helton could be without a job come the end of the season. Athlon projects the USC to go 8-4 and 6-3 and and in conference, while ESPN projects them to win 8.9 games and 6.6 conference games. According to Phil Steele, they play the 24th hardest schedule. When I looked at their schedule, I was surprised at how well I projected USC to do. I believe they will go 10-2 and this season and 8-1 and in conference play as they represent the South Division in the Pac-12 championship game. I believe they go into their bye 6-0 with wins over San Jose State, at Washington State, Oregon State, at Colorado, and home against Utah. Coming off the bye, I think they lose at home to Notre Dame before beating Arizona and losing at Arizona State. Then I believe they finish the year on a three-game win streak with wins at California, UCLA, and BYU. They probably won't make the playoffs, but they do have a chance to play in a New Year's Six Bowl. But what do you think? How will USC do this season? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos in the preview series. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.